Well everybody, it's late March uh, 2010, I almost said 2009, sometimes I'm good at catching the year and sometimes I'm not, but I reckon around September I'll have it pretty much down pat. We've got the old cold forgotten Buick here, still running along just as strong as ever. Sound a little rattly these days, but nothing too serious. Anyway, it just got a set of new tires today, and they look pretty sharp. Now if only the people who put the last set on hadn't broken all the hubcaps, we'd be set. We also took the opportunity to clean all the junk out of the car, and it really made quite a difference. As far as the interior goes, probably get better fuel economy too, would be my guess. But that's not really what today's video is about. Nope. I've been working in the Roach Palace, upstairs in our wonderful little room up there. And as you can see, the Roach Palace has got a TV antenna mast on it, and a slightly crimped and messed up TV antenna. Well, that's going to come down from there. The key keeper's going to take care of that, because I'm not going up there, I'll promise you that. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to install an FM antenna up there. Specifically, this is the FM antenna that we're going to install today. This is the Antenna Craft FMSS Omnidirectional FM antenna. And I've done most of the preparatory work to get it put up there. I've installed the matching transformer, locked these elements into position, attached the signal amplifier piece that goes out on the antenna. But yeah, here's the stereo system that I put in. Just a Best Buy stereo receiver, which is actually made by Sherwood, and their HD radio tuner. And we're not getting along too badly with just this wire antenna and this FM dipole for the HD radio tuner. But it would be nice to have something a little bit better. And I've got the antenna mast sitting outside anyhow. So I might as well with the key keeper's help, put a much better antenna out there and see how we get along FM reception wise with that. Now for those of you that are watching this video and maybe even thinking of enter, uh, entertaining thoughts of uh, installing an antenna by yourself, it should, it should go without saying that installing an antenna can be very, very dangerous. It can be fatal if you don't do it right. You know, the least, uh, the least of your concerns is falling off of here, because if you're relatively sure-footed, you're not going to have a problem with that. But the real risk in installing any antenna is power lines. If you have an antenna near power lines that's a metal object, obviously it's conductive. If it falls onto the power lines, if there's power lines near your antenna, that could make a very, very dangerous situation, and you don't want that. So this video is not a how-to. If you're wondering how to install an antenna on your roof to improve your television or your radio reception, you might want to read some books on the subject. You might want to find somebody who knows what they're doing and hire them to do it. Something along those lines. I don't want any of my viewers getting hurt, so please, take that advice to heart. Don't be stupid. Don't do something that you're not ready to do. Now this antenna, as I was mentioning before, this is the AntennaCraft FMSS antenna, omnidirectional, as previously stated. And this antenna was reviewed very well in all the places that I looked. So I'm hoping that by the time we get it up there and we get rid of that old antenna that's up there right now, which is of no use to anybody, I'm hoping that it will drastically improve our FM reception here at the Roach Palace. And in a moment, I'm sure the key keeper will be back. He went to get some uh, anti-corrosion spray to put on our antenna terminals here because I would imagine after spending a lot of time in the weather that these terminals right here as well as these other terminals on this other element they might very well gall or corrode or do something when exposed to the elements. And there he goes checking to see whether or not he's got the right wrench to remove the old antenna. Again, you want to be careful if you try this yourself because you really don't want to go plummeting to the earth. That would be bad. And again, can't, can't stress the importance of this enough. Stay away from power lines when you're doing this kind of work. Now there he is tying the uh, rope off to the antenna so that when he loosens the fasteners that are holding it, you can see we've got it run through one of the rungs of the antenna. He can lift the antenna over 
and then I can lower it to the ground at a controlled rate by controlling how fast this rope moves over that fulcrum point up there. Okay, folks, here comes the old antenna right now. You can let go, bud. I got it. I don't want it dragging on Oh, yeah, it's going to drag on that cable TV line. Yeah, it's hung up in that cable TV line, bud. Think you can break it free? Yeah, hang on. Is that not? Yeah. Okay, it out. And there it goes, folks. Now, the key keeper was up here earlier. He took a couple of high-resolution pictures of this thing. And judging by some patents that we found on the antenna rotator, I don't think we're entirely sure they're valid, but because um, they came up with something that was a little different from what we've got here. But this thing could date from the late 40s, early 50s. You suppose it's really been up there at the top of that tower all those years? Kind of amazing when you think about it. <laughs> How's everybody doing down there? Oh, we're doing real good. Send up the new one already. All righty. There goes the new antenna up. I don't know how long it'll be staying up there, hopefully a while. Whoops. There he is, tightening it up, putting it in place. It's looking real good! And then we'll put our amplifier box on a little lower down on the mast. We'll hook a cable up to it. And then finally we'll hook a cable up to the output of the amplifier. Get a tuner out here and see how well it does. So there's the antenna way up at the top. And now the key keeper is repositioning himself so he can tape down the coax in periodic steps on his way down. And then he'll put the signal amplifier box that goes out on the mast here. He'll put that into place. It's getting dark out, but we're almost done here. The key keeper's tightening up the amplifier box on the antenna mast. Then I'm going to go grab some coax cable and a stereo tuner, a standalone tuner, and see what kind of reception we're getting. Hopefully very good. Alright, here we go. The key keeper did all the work up there. Got a piece of coax coming down into the amplifier's power unit here. I'm feeding it, uh, I'm, I've not got the amplification turned up too high, but let's see what we get here. Got this thing on scan tuning. Let's see what it does. There's something. A lot of stations coming in. Some of them better than others. But yeah, I'd call it a success. Pretty good one at that. Some of them are definitely coming in better than others. We might need to make some fine-tuning adjustments, but uh, this is a very good result. And so, since it's getting dark out here, the key keeper and I are going to go ahead and wrap it up.